everybody, Todd from Image Wash Products. Today we're going to do a nice two-step video using our Polish Safe soaps. First off, I just want to show you a quick minute what I'm going to be using. This is our four-step box that you're going to be able to purchase. And the reason why it's four-step is you can do up to four flavors. So today I'm going to be using uh, Touchless, our Touchless Pro 1 and our Total Bright 2. Uh, those soaps work very well together and give you a nice finished product. So this is our setup right here. We got our box for four flavors. So I got my arrow point on the one. This is your selector knob. So you turn it to this side, it'll operate this box. You turn it to this side, it operates that box. And then if you're only using that box, you can choose one and two, one and two. So today we're gonna do the Touchless Pro 1 which is Polish Safe and Total Bright 2. So I got my arrow set on there. So when I'm washing, all I got to do is come back and change it over. Um, another neat feature is you can put it in the middle, which will bypass the injectors and give you 100% maximum rinsing power when you're rinsing. But so we're going to slide it over and start with Touches Pro 1. All right. So this is our project today that I want to demonstrate. Yesterday, I ended up going to Chicago overnight for a good friend and the roads were wet all the way. So we got basically salt, grime, you name it, covered on this truck. These are my, th my uh, three weapons, my tools of warfare for washing today. We got our, we got our lance here, which has the, um, let's see here, get it out there, quick attachment. So you can take it off by the gun. This is your premium high-low nozzle that you're gonna get. The red is soap, black is rinse, all right? So I have, I have to go into the shop to change flavors, but I can control the on and off soap here, which saves you 50% of your footsteps. Time it out right, what I typically do is wherever I start, I try to end up closer to the building. So when I switch my soaps, I can switch it when I get to the back doors of the trailer. It just saves me walking back and forth. Next, we have a brush. Yes, we got a brush. This is touch the soap, but it, there is some brushing required. And the only brushing that I'm going to do is on those stacks. If you look toward the top, you're going to see a lot of soot from the exhaust. Also, stainless. When all the grime sticks, especially on stainless pipes, you got extreme hot exhaust temperatures, and it's baking the grime on there. So if you don't stay on top of it, you will have to scrub. I haven't washed this in a while. And it, yesterday we got back, we just parked. It's a little bit baked on. So I'm gonna scrub those stacks just because I want it done right. You can also hit the glass, the visor, any, any sort of angle that you can't get the soap to inject on, you're gonna have a light grime. So you gotta make sure that when you're washing, you're keeping it very uh, straightforward and flat to the surface, all right? Um, so I'm gonna pop the hood. I'm gonna do the hood today also underneath the engine just because all the salt and water got thrown up in there. Um, another key feature is when you're soap in here, a lot of the salt gets up in here. And what happens is if you don't rinse it good, it's gonna lay in there all winter and it'll start corroding this out because this is aluminum. And these are chrome stainless. And when you get uh, salt and chloride and stuff in there, they're gonna react. You can see it bubbling on this truck already. So I'm going to really focus on down there because a lot of the, the, the water and stuff got run up. So I'll do that good. Another neat thing to remember is you got to rinse, 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 tell you're sick of rinsing and rinse some more. Because what happens is you'll soap up underneath there if you don't rinse good and you're doing it outside or you leave it sit overnight. It's going to drip down on that tank and you're going to come in in the morning and you're going to see all soap, soap and salt scum on the tank just because you didn't rinse good. So it takes quite a while. It takes a lot of water to get all that stuff out. But just, I'm gonna to work to the front and I'm going all the way down. So we're gonna put our number one on, then our two. Uh, on this trailer, we might get some comments like, oh, uh, you didn't brighten the rails or, oh, I didn't clean up the rails good. These soaps are not designed to brighten and you do not want to brighten this in the winter time because what happens is, is if you put a fluorinated acid on there, it will brighten it, but it opens the pores on the aluminum and the salt will go down deeper in. In two, three years, you're gonna have aluminum that looks real silvery, a lot of holes, real porous. So 
I'm not going to brighten anything today. It's not maybe going to clean this rail up perfect, but we want to wait till spring till we do stuff like that. This truck is fully polished. It doesn't look like it now, but you'll see what it looks like when we're done. So let's get started with our number one. I'm going to open the hood and then start going. Kitty cat power right here, folks. I don't care what kind of fan you are. I personally like cats. Um, you might like Detroit's or Cummins. I like them all. So we're just gonna, these soaps are safe on all this. It's not gonna do anything. It gives you a chance to get underneath here by the leaf springs, by the brake chambers. Just clean that stuff up, right? Because what does salt like to do? It, number one purpose is to corrode things, I guess. So we wanna get it off the paint and the metals as best as possible. Here's another good one here. You can see all the, we want to call them dirt, grime, streaks coming off. I'm not sure what it's going to do on this, but most of the time it's going to get them 90% off. Another key feature, if you use our wax replacement, I highly encourage it. I talked some, to some fellow truck drivers yesterday, and they had nothing but good things to say about it from the point of view is they put it on all their aluminum, and they noticed that none of their aluminum has white specks from the salt eaten and corroding with aluminum. So they spray it on their rims, fuel tanks, everything. And it just keeps the salt from sticking and when you wash it next time, it makes it a lot easier. So let's get going and have some fun. Let's wash this bad boy. going to switch to two now. I have enough one in there to do those doors, so we're going to switch to two and then I'll run back up front. Hustle, hustle. Now this two, I'm going up and down that way because if you go side to side, you're going to tiger strike. What that means is the way the water is projecting on the surface, it's hitting on too great of an angle, so it's not even cleaning the top part. So I go up like this, like you would brush, right? So when you do that with your number two, you won't have any miss spots, one bit. You clean out those hinges good too. Those are aluminum, so that's a lot of that salt likes to build up in there. You wanna get that soap up in there, neutralize that stuff out. You can see already what the one is doing. Breaking down all that grime, salt, whatever. Look at that tank, it was black. Got the nozzle protectors. That's a custom paint job, so. That helps out so you don't scratch nothing. If I wouldn't have let this sit last night, I probably wouldn't have to do this, but it sat all night and got um, bonded on there more. Here's a prime example of how fast that chloride and salt works. This has literally only been 24 hours and this thing's never been in the salt. Look at all that, what it did. The 
He corroded it. See? Can't get that off. That's how fast your aluminum goes to crap. Because of what they put on the road. So it's very important that you keep up on your two-step to try to minimize that. It's gonna keep draining, so when I get down with the trailer, I'll come back and re-rinse it again. Why would I rinse bottom up? Um, if you go bottom up, you're giving that soap more time to dwell. And you can see your line where you're cleaning versus going down, right? It's going to be right. If you start at the top, it's running down. If you brighten trailers with acid, um, you always want to do that bottom up. Because if you start up top, work your way down, the trails are going to target that area more because it's been on there longer. So always go bottom up, right? So you get a nice even application without having trails everywhere. Before I finish, I'm going to rinse out that rail because the trailer's angling this way, right? If I go that way, the water's going to keep coming down. You'll have soap scum. So I'm just going to quick run down and then I'll start here and work my way up. Another thing to remember is people might say, uh, you're soap biodegradable. Yes, sir, it is. If it ain't gonna ruin aluminum, like the salt is, it's biodegradable, right? Um, they're 100% safe. On the back doors there, like I said, it might have dried overnight. So if you look above the hinge on the top there, there might be a little leftover. So you might want to grab the brush and do that. But for total transparency, let's just leave it so you guys can see it when it's dried. Side two, a couple of things before comments get thrown out. Yes, I'm going to blow soap up on the roof where I just got done washing. Two, I'll go back and rinse it off. Three, same process as you did on the other side. This one has twin reefer tanks, so I'll probably get up in the middle from this side. But like I said, I'll go back and re-rinse everything off that I just did, but that's the nature of the beast. We're injecting soap, high pressure, so it's gonna fling it. But just make sure you go back and re-rinse it down. So, pretty simple. <laughs> All right, so we just got done washing and we're gonna do just a quick walk around to show you some of um, the aftermath on this truck. So we'll start here on the grill. You can see <clears throat> right here, you can see that. That's all, you step back, you're gonna really see it. That's all pitting from the chloride. That's how fast that stuff works. That's why guys spend thousands of dollars in the spring to have to shine up their stuff. So if you don't polish it by hand in the winter to keep it protected somewhat, you're going to be sanding a lot of stuff. So if we go down here, tires are clean, more pitting, more pitting from all the salt and stuff. Look at the inside of the rim. You can see all that. That's all from the whatever's on the road. So don't give me that baloney that it doesn't wreck stuff. It does but you need it to be able to drive too. So um, we brushed, you can see the paint, look from the sun, I mean, it's clean. Um, I didn't brush any of the paint. That's from my wet hand, but um, very clean. This is stainless. I don't see any salt or grime on there. I brushed the stacks, obviously those are gonna be clean. Look at the tank, see? Th this, is, this is another joy right there. Giddy up. Trailer, we didn't brush a thing. That's how clean it is. Back rims, yep. See? That's good. This right here, soap scum. Yep. I got hard water at the shop, so it's going to do that. 
here's another thing right here. This is what I was talking about, more salt damage. Okay, it's getting whipped up from the back of the tires. You come around here, same thing, but you see how you see some of that, that, that soap scum salt from up here. If you look inside that rail, look how dirty that is. Technically, that's still full of salt. Pain in the butt. Go down, rails look good. I'm happy. I'm happy. That's still wet yet. Okay. These rims, not so bad. They must have recently been polished, so they held up pretty good, but I still see, I still all, see all the micro pitting from the salt. Hand polish would probably clean that right up. We come to the back here. This is what I'm talking about right here. Right here, see, that's either from water, um, still salt and stuff in the grooves. I didn't brush anything, but you can see right here. See, I got it. I got to really get after that to get that off. That's definitely from the salt reacting from stuff back here. Um, so like I said, stay on top of it when you get back off the road. If you can wash it, do it. Don't let it sit overnight in the in the bay. I understand if you have to because it's freezing cold outside and the, the iron is cold. But it's a nice mild day today, so there's no excuse for me other than I wanted to save this for content. I would have washed this right away when I got back off the road. It would have took me 40 minutes. And I could have came in the morning and just touched up some things by hand and been good. So... When you're two-stepping like this, you want to make sure the surface is clean, but keep that wax replacement on there. That is your best friend. All day, all year round, it's your best friend. It's going to help you. Like I said, some friends of mine that own their own trucks and they keep their stuff clean, they put it on and then they're not seeing any of that pitting. Um, I'm more than willing to give you their phone numbers and call them and ask them. So I can't stress it enough. Keep it protected in the winter so you don't have to deal with that. But this is a big project. Um, how long did it take us, Adam? Oh, 50 minutes. Okay. So 50 minutes from start to finish with some talking and uh, brushing and lots of rinsing. Um, everybody's going to want to know how much soap am I going to go through? You're putting a lot of soap on. Yes, I was. Two reasons. One, I'm trying to eliminate brushing. Two, um, our soaps are ultra concentrates, so they're a lot foamier, so it looks like a lot, but it's not. And I guess the third one would be, I'm putting it on medium pressure to high. Um, and we're doing that through our system. That's the neat thing about us is it's all bypassing the pump, so you don't have the soaps going through your pumps. High pressuring to me is the way to clean, because you are blowing that chemical on the surface versus downstreaming where you kind of lay it on there or whatever um, you're pre-soaking and you're clean at the same time so it just speeds things up if I had to, if I had to give you guys a number on how much soap I would say I took a half a gallon of each flavor so one gallon total of soap but if you do the math it's half the price of a truck wash but you can do it yourself so you can get in areas that they're not gonna get control what soaps go on there a lot of people say no acid no acid and We've all been there where they put acid on your stuff and um, you're not losing time sitting in line. That's another big thing. Your time is money. People might watch this video and say, no way, that is not me. Whatever. The guys that do watch it and looking to clean their stuff by themselves, we got solutions. It's hard in the winter. The crap that they put on over the United States is unbelievable. I polish, so I would say in the last two years, I've noticed the aluminum being twice as bad as normally. You can see just by the white specks, it's either more chloride or uh, beet juice or whatever they're using, but it damages things a lot faster. So that's where our soaps come in. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate everybody. Keep on trucking.